Hey everyone, Kevin P. McAuliffe here, and I am back again with another Creative Cow tutorial. And in our ongoing look at learning Avid's Media Composer and Symphony, I thought in this lesson what we would do is we would take a look at using Photoshop files inside of your Media Composer and Symphony timeline. Now, most people associate Photoshop with an NLE like Premiere Pro CS6. Don't get me wrong, I love Premiere Pro, but you know what? Photoshop files are just as easy to work with inside of your Symphony and Media Composer timeline as they are inside of Premiere Pro. Well, maybe not as easy, but you know what? Once you see how simple they are to work with, I guarantee you, you're going to be using Photoshop to create your titles all the time. Okay, short introduction here. Let's just get into Symphony and let's get started. Okay, now what I actually should have said was let's just get into Photoshop and let's get started. What I'm actually going to do here is I'm going to alt tab into Adobe's Photoshop. That's obviously a command tab for all of my Mac friends out there. What we're going to do is navigate up to File, we're going to come down to New, and what I always encourage people to do is to come down to the Preset section, especially if you're doing work for film and television. What I'm going to do is I'm going to click on the Preset drop-down, and I'm going to navigate down to Film and Video. Now, in this case, we're working in a 1280 by 720 project, so what we're going to do is we're just going to drop down our size, and we're going to navigate right down here to DVC Pro HD 720p 2997. Now, you're going to see it's going to make it 960 by 720. That's okay for what we're doing. You'll also see that if I come in here, I'm also going to have an HDV HDTV 720p 2997, which in this case is 1280 by 720. You know what? We'll just stick with this one. That's fine for the purposes of what we're doing. You'll see for the background color or the background contents right now, it's set to be white. What I'm going to do is just make it transparent here, and I'm going to say OK. Now, the reason that I go in and I use the presets is because by selecting the preset, uh, and the preset that you want, what you're actually going to get is you're going to get the safe zones laid out for you, which is always very, very handy to have. Okay, so let me set up a common scenario where you might use a program like Photoshop. What we're going to do is we're going to create a little fancy lower third here. What we're going to do first here is I'm just going to make a red bar. I'm going to select an area here. Now, you're going to see that I have the feather on, so I don't, don't want to do that. I'm just going to set the feather to be zero here. And let's just trace the area out again, just like such. What I'm going to do is hit Shift and Backspace, or Shift and the large delete key for all my Mac friends out there. And that is to call up the fill command. And what we're going to do is just fill with the foreground to make this box red. Now, what we're going to do is just position it like about there, I think is pretty good. And what we're going to do now is I'm going to type in some text. And I think I'm going to type in here Kevin P. McAuliffe. And uh, you know what? I'm just going to leave that. I'm going to separate each one of the, the elements. What I'm going to do is I'm going to have my name, and then I'm going to have my title right below that. And so let's do this. What I'm going to do is I'm simply going to right-click on my name, and I'm going to select Duplicate. And I'm just going to type in Creative Cow Leader. Now, what I always like to do here as well is I'll select all of this and I'll copy it so that way when I say OK and I turn off the Kevin P. McAuliffe layer all I have to do now is simply select this layer we'll just select all of it here and hit Control and V on Windows Command and V on the Mac and there's my Creative Cal Leader. Now what I'm going to do is just turn my name back on we'll just get everything sort of positioned roughly where we're going to want it to go now obviously this is way too big to fit into our lower third bar here so let's just shrink stuff down here what we're going to do is we're going to make this, maybe we'll make this about, I don't know, 50 point size. That'll probably work. And let's just do the same thing for the Creative Cow Leader here. We'll just set that to be 50. I think that's probably going to be good. Let's position this and see. So we'll put Creative Cow Leader right down there on the edge of title safe. And I'm going to put Kevin P. McAuliffe right above it. I think that's pretty darn good. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to select the uh, background bar, and I'm going to use the up, down, left, and right arrow keys just to do a fine-tune positioning on that. That's looking pretty good. Okay. So what I want to do now is I actually want to feather the end of this bar off. So going back to our selection tool, we're actually going to set the feather, in this case, to be about 50. And let's just lasso around the area, probably about like that. I think that's pretty good. I'm just going to hit the backspace key or the large delete key for all my Mac friends out there. And that's not too bad. I'm going to hit it again. That's better. That way we get everything gone all the way down to the end here. That's looking pretty good. Okay, now in this case, you know, nothing really too fancy. You know, I've created my name, I've created my title, I've got my background element. But really what you're going to use Photoshop for is to create, you know, multiple versions of a similar look. So for example, I'm not the only creative cow leader over at the cow. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to right click and I'm going to say duplicate layer. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to punch in here Tim Wilson, the new head 
the new head of the herd here. So there's Tim Wilson. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to right click on Tim Wilson here and I'm going to duplicate that again. We're going to type in Andrew Davis here. Why not? We'll give us three leaders and let's just make sure that we actually type in all the names here. Now, of course, I could have copied and pasted that, but why, you know, why would I make things easy for myself here? Andrew Davis, and let's type in Tim Wilson here. And then once we have that typed in, we're going to be all set to go here. Okay, and you can see that we're all creative cow leaders. Very cool. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to turn everything on here. Actually, you know what? Why don't I do this first? I'm just going to turn everything off except my name. You know, why not keep my own name and lights there? And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to hit Control Shift and S on the keyboard on, the, on Windows. Command Shift and S for all my Mac friends out there. We'll just call this CC Leaders. I'll say save. Now you'll notice that I saved it as layers, so I'm simply going to say OK. And I'm just going to close this and just to verify that we do have this saved as a layered element, I'm just going to double click on it and there's all my layers all set to go. Okay, so let's get into Symphony here. What I'm going to do is just minimize Photoshop. I'm going to Alt Tab into Symphony, obviously Command Tab for all my Mac friends out there. And what we'll do is we'll just rename this folder Graphics. Okay. And what I'm going to do, double click on that graphics bin, and let's import that Photoshop file and see what happens. What we're going to do is simply right click, we're going to come up to import, and of course, Symphony is going to prompt me as to what file I want to import, and I'm going to select Creative Cow Leaders. Now, before I go and select Creative Cow Leaders, I do want to make sure of one thing. What I'm going to do is I'm going to switch to the options, and I'm just going to set the alpha channel right now to be ignore. And I'm simply going to say OK. Now, I'm going to select Creative Cow Leaders, I'm going to say open. Now, Symphony is going to say, well, hold on a second. This file contains layers. You can import it as a flattened image, a sequence of layers, or a sequence of chosen layers. Now, in this case, what I'm going to do is just import a flattened image. Now, you're going to see that what's happened is, is that it's imported the title, and you'll see that it's only imported the layers that were visible. But the only problem is that this is now in white, and this is totally not a keyable element. What I'm going to do is just grab a motocross clip here. Let's just grab this one I used in the last tutorial. Sure, why not? We'll just drop it into the graphics bin. Control and Y on Windows, Command and Y on the Mac to create a new layer. And you'll see that as soon as I drop this in, not keyable at all. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to delete this element altogether. And we're just going to import it again. Exactly what we did before. I'm just going to say import. We'll select CC leaders. But what I'm going to do in this case is I'm going to come into options. And I'm going to say, you know what? Don't invert. We want black to be opaque. And I'm going to say, okay. And we're going to import this. We'll say flattened image. And look at this. We now have a keyable element. You can see it's a matte key. I'm going to take it. I'm going to drag it and drop it over here. Oh, that's not right. That actually kind of looks like it's backwards. Let's actually take this. Let's drop it into this timeline here. Let's make sure I actually hit T on the keyboard to mark this entire clip. And you'll see that we actually have the animation reversed. We can see through the bar that everything else is blocked off. Now, most people think, okay, well, you know what? i got to delete this and i got to import it again. You don't actually have to do any of that if you import this the wrong way by accident. Because in a lot of cases, what happens is, is I'm given files that I import the correct way. The problem is whoever gave them to me actually gave me the alpha channel reversed. So what I'm going to do in this case is just simply step into effects mode by pressing the shift and Y on the keyboard, my shortcut for effects mode. Again, if you don't have effects mode mapped to your keyboard, you can find it right here, or you can find it right down here at the top of your timeline. And what we're going to do is when we step into effects mode, you're going to see right now we have our matte key right here, just like such. And what we're actually going to do is we're going to come down and we're going to promote this to 3D. What we're going to do is come down to the foreground right here. I'm just going to turn the foreground on, and I'm simply going to say invert key, and there's the key exactly the way that it should be. I can now simply hit play, and there we go. So don't think just because you've imported something with the alpha channel reverse that you can't get in and quickly fix it. Just remember, you're going to want to promote it down here, lower right-hand corner of the effect, simply come into the foreground, and invert the key. Now, what I said we're going to do here in this case is I'm just going to delete this element again here. I'm going to import it the right way. I'm simply going to right-click, say Import. We're going to select CC Leaders. Now, you'll remember, because in Photoshop, do I still have it open here? Yes, I do. Because right now, this background is empty. So technically, this is considered to be white. So white is going to be opaque in this case. So what I'm going to do is come back in. We're going to come to Options. You'll see now, we're going to invert on Import. White is opaque. So I'm going to simply say OK. And what we're going to do is we're going to say Open. I'm, again, just going to flatten the image. We're going to take this element, we're going to bring it in and take a look at that. It's now over top of black, which means that if I take it, drop it into my timeline, guess what? It's now keyable and ready to play back. 
Now one great shortcut that I want to show you, in a lot of cases we want to have this fade in. So what I'm going to do is I'm simply going to just remove a chunk of the uh, clip right here at the top of my timeline by simply selecting the area I want to remove and hitting the Z key uh, on both Mac and Windows. That's obviously Z for all of my American friends out there. And what I want to do is I don't want to have this cut in. I want to have it fade in. And what a lot of people do is they'll come in and they'll simply add a transition, which you can totally do. You can say, let's add a transition. Now, of course, I don't like to work that way because I have a shortcut to actually put that in. And no, it's not the Add Dissolve shortcut. What I'm actually going to do is hit F12 on the keyboard, which is my shortcut for Fade Effect. Now, because the Mac key is technically in effect, all I have to do now is simply punch in the duration that I want it to fade up and say OK. And now when I come back and hit Play, there it is fading in. Now, the reason I do that is because depending on how old your system is, once you start adding effects to transitions and things like that, you might actually have to get in and render things, which I don't want to get into do. Doing it this way, you don't have to render anything. OK, so let me show you the other options for importing. What I'm going to do is just delete this element here again. We're just going to select this whole thing and remove it. I'm going to right click in my bin. We're going to come up to Import. We're going to select CC Leaders. I'm going to say Open. And let's just choose the first one. We're going to import a sequence of layers. So I'm going to say Go. And you're going to see that Symphony is going to bring in that element. And you're going to see what it's done is it's brought in each one of the layers as its own separate element. You'll see I'll just drag them and open a little bit more here. There we go. You'll see I've got layer one with alpha. I've got the Creative Cow Leader with alpha, my name with the alpha, Tim Wilson's name, and Andrew Davis's name. But what it's also done is it's also brought in a sequence for me. What I'm going to do is just double click on these. You'll see there are the different names. There we go. But what it's also done is it's brought in this sequence that actually has all of the layers ready to go, just like that. So I can actually get a visual representation of the stacking order of this Photoshop file. It's a very handy way to get it. This is also actually very easy for doing things like animation. I could simply start adding edits into these layers, dragging elements down, and fading them in very quickly and very easily. In most cases, if I'm bringing in multiple elements, this is the way that I'm going to do it. So that way I not only have, like I said, a visual representation of the PSD file with a sequence, but I also just have all the elements right here. But Let's say someone gives you a Photoshop file that has, you know, a thousand layers of which you only need five of them. You don't need to go into Photoshop and mess around with it. All you have to do is simply right click. What we'll actually do here is I'm just going to delete these elements here just because I don't want too much stuff in here. I'll say OK and I'll say Go. I'm going to right click and say Import. Now you'll remember when I did that last import inside my options, my alpha channel was set to Invert on Import. White is opaque. So that's why I'm leaving it like that because I know but that is the correct import setting. I'm just going to select the Photoshop file again. Say open. Let's select the layers we want to import. And you'll see now I could come in and let's say this is a piece that's being done by Tim Wilson. So I only want to bring in the Tim Wilson uh, element. I want to bring in the Creative Cow Leader. And I want to bring in the layer one, which I know is that background. I'm now simply going to say OK. And there's those three elements plus a sequence, again, giving me a visual representation of this ready to go. So if I wanted to have, you know, let's say I wanted to have the, uh, I wanted to have these fade in in sequence. So what I can do now is simply come back and let's just delete some of layer two and we'll delete some of layer three. And again, what we're going to do is we're going to use that great F12 key. And what I'm actually going to do is make sure I'm parked over all three layers here. And let's just set the fade in to be 12 frames. And I'm going to say, okay. So now if I come back to the beginning, we have a fade in of the bar. It'll sit there for a bit. This obviously should have happened sooner, but you'll get the idea of the way this goes. Creative Cal Leader, and then Tim Wilson. And obviously, if I wanted to reverse that, all I'd have to do is just start Tim Wilson earlier and Creative Cal Leaders later. So you can see that working with Photoshop files inside of your Media Composer and Symphony timeline is very simple. And if that's how you're comfortable working, if you're comfortable creating all of your supers, your, you know, your name keys, your lower thirds, and such and the like inside of Photoshop, you don't need to feel like you need to change your workflow and start doing your titles inside of Media Composer and Symphony because creating them, importing them, and working with them is very simple. So if you have any questions, you have any comments, or you have any tutorial requests, you can send them to Kevin P. McAuliffe at gmail.com. This has been Kevin P. McAuliffe. Thanks a lot for watching.